Uh, first of all, I'm honored to stand here in front of you and to be on the same stage as my idol, Santiago Calatrava. Uh, now, I'm going to tell you something about the building and the company I work on. HSB, it's a cooperative housing company in Sweden. That's actually the biggest company in Sweden. Throughout the span of 10 years time, Tunitos had, has had a vast impact on Malmö. Other property developers have begun to invest in the expansion of the Western Harbour. And at the same time, Malmö has transformed from being a committed industrial city to an IT, media and knowledge-based city. Tunitosu is a top-rated tourist attraction. On any given day, 500 tourists pass by to take photos of the building. Up to present time, I've held presentations for over 130,000 people from all over the world about Tunitosu, from the United States, through Europe to China and Japan. Uh, and Tonitosa has become Malmö's and Sweden's most famous landmark. During this time, we have noticed that young people settled in this area and urban lifestyle has become increasingly popular in the last 10 years. The Western Harbour is an area built, in, built on 100% renewable energy, windmills, geothermal heating, living roofs, solar panels, central garbage disposal, as well as organic waste being used for biogas. Even the infrastructure is constantly improving with additional bus lines, routes that are more frequent, as well as new larger entrance and exit paths to and from the Western Harbour area. The Western Harbour is based on pedestrian and bicycle traffic as well as necessary car traffic with a maximum speed at uh, 5 miles per hour. A large parking garage on each block results in less traffic on the streets for the visitors and the residents. This is some important key dates. Uh, uh, about the building. The groundbreaking was in February 2001. Uh, the construction started the same year in June and the casting of, of the foundation in March 2002. The foundations was completed in August 2002 and the, complete, the, the completion of the Tornitoso, the first tenant moved in the 1st of November 2005. This is all, this land is all reclaimed from the sea. You can see to the left the picture from 1960, the, the Western Harbour is, is starting to develop. 1973, the picture in the middle, and to the right, it's now, it looks today, 2012, this picture. It's not actually today, next picture is from today. The Western Harbour area, 2015, down uh, on the left side, the beach, and then we have the first exhibition area, living 2001, uh, to the left of Turning Torso, and then all the other areas will be completed in the next 16 years from now. You can notice to the right the old dry dock. This is an old shipyard. Uh, and uh, nowadays it's a marina, uh, there was a crane, we sold it to Hyundai uh, shipyard in South Korea in 2002. The city uh, has an idea that uh, in 2031 uh, it will be completed, the whole area, and then there will be 25,000 people living in the Western Harbour area and 25,000 people will work and study in the same area. When the city, uh, sorry, when the shipyard was the biggest in 1962, there were 6,000 people uh, working at that, at that place. 
some different angles uh, from the building, uh, the beautiful building, uh, the, the cube side, and this is from the spine side. The beautiful handles, the, uh, the way into the reception, and you can see the way also uh, in the evening into the reception. This is the reception. To the right, we have the reception for all those who live in the building. Uh, the office is in the building, of course. All the visitors to those who live in the building. And to the left, we have the reception for the conference floors on 53 and 54. Short presentation. Two beautiful pictures. An ordinary evening, the, build, the picture to the left and the picture to the right, uh, that is from May 23, 2013. Uh, and that was when we had the Eurovision Song Contest in Malmö and in Sweden. And the city wanted to light, it, light up the building, so that's the picture to the right. Throughout the years, the 10 years we've turned in Torsu, by the way, the 10 best years of my life, to, to, to be a manager of this beautiful building, we've got 13 prizes throughout 10 years. And, and uh, today, prize number 14, um, the next picture we have, and we, this is an old company, by the way, 90 years of experience. Every year I'm standing on the roof, have 360 degrees view on New Year's Eve, looking at the fireworks to celebrate prize number 14 today. What a better way to celebrate it than show you the picture, the view I have every New Year's Eve, the fireworks. And uh, now, that was my last picture, short presentation about my work, our beautiful building. Uh, and uh, I'm leaving up to you, Paul, Keller, Trevor. Maybe you're coming up to join me to take over the presentation. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm uh, very proud to be here and uh, to have the opportunity to speak to you. Nevertheless, because we are in Chicago, which it is probably the first city in the world who has recognized the importance of the contemporary architecture and the, of the history of the architecture in the 19th to the 20th century. And um, also very honored for uh, have the opportunity also to present you the work we have done. When I say we have done, I mean uh, Turning Torso is the product of a collective. Nevertheless, the client has played a very important role. Then uh, skip, uh, there is not uh, a good building without a client who wants to do a real good building, isn't it? That is something I learned those years. And I want to start, this is a sketch, what you are saying. Myself, uh, from my curriculum side, I started uh, in an art school, went into a polytechnic to study architecture. After that, I studied also at the polytechnic in Zurich, a civil engineer, and even I have done a PhD on mechanics. So my career started very much in the art and went more and more towards the exact world of, of uh, let's say, the mechanics, the mathematics, and all of that. But I never stopped drawing, which I have done all my life, and so sculpting. Uh, so the importance uh, of recognizing in architecture a plastic value has been for me um, always a basis of my work. Here you see some studies of sculptures based all in the human body, based in our behavior, why we stand up. Those precede in years, sometimes 20 years, you see, or more, the work and turning torso, but are the basis of the formal achievement or the, the, the formal spirit, you know, who, uh, who, uh, from which the building is done. 
Uh, so you see here, these uh, are inspired, as I say, in the vertebral column and the way how we stand up. Here you see a, a variant of that. Here is the turning torso. So I mean, as I am standing in front of you and looking all of you, I can also twist my body and uh, reproduce uh, this, what you are seeing here. Um, it is important because for me, this type of approach, very mechanic and very precise and very geometric, very much also influenced from my background as an engineer, um, has brought me to certain conceptions like here, 80 South Street, an apartment building with terraces um, who will not be built, isn't it, for uh, lower Manhattan. Then here also another building in which getting out of another shape, you see it here, this is a railway station in Lyon, the first uh, high-speed railway station built in Europe. It's called Lyon Saint-Exupéry. Here you see also the piece you were seeing frontally, you see it now from the side. And it has inspired me also the work in the auditorium, the opera in Tenerife, uh, in the Canary Islands. And here some um, uh, uh, views of this, what is called Golden Bridge, is called uh, is a sculptor who also was the basis of the bridge you see down we have built in, in Venice. Recently, because I have been doing that all my life, I was honored having an exhibition in Park Avenue from April to a couple of weeks ago. And uh, why it's important to see those shapes? It is because they are also the basis to understand the formal vocabulary used in uh, the piece we are doing uh, with, uh, together with the Port Authority for Ground Zero, the path station. Indeed, also working here uh, in the area, I mean in Wisconsin, in Milwaukee, I got also the opportunity uh, to do something who a little bit breathes from this spirit. Um, so finally, what I want to underline, it is that the research, the pure formal research, the, the sculptural research is at least an start, an inspirational start to do architecture, who has to be functional, who has to be financed, who has to be statically uh, correct, and, and has to be also buildable and financeable, and uh, so. Here, um, another building that we started almost here, but the crisis of 2008 um, stopped it, is uh, uh, the Chicago Spire. So again, you know, for me, if I think on the beauty of uh, the Chicago skyline and the singularity also of this building who twists and uh, screws itself up in the night of Chicago. Here again, we are coming to uh, turning torso. Now, um, if you see how difficult it is also to be capable or to have the opportunity to build something uh, new, and something just coming for, as Le Corbusier say, as a pure creation of the spirit, which it is uh, architecture. You see, so I am enormously grateful to my client, HSB, for its courage, and also for the ability to bring brilliantly through and develop uh, this uh, um, building to uh, a public success and also to an economic success. And um, here you see turning torso. Um, so I was surprised when the client approached me uh, uh, with the idea of doing a tall building and landmarking the place. Um, <clears throat> my proposition was getting out of the sculpture. You saw something as you are seeing here. Uh, a very slender building in a flat landscape, visible even from the other side of the Öresund from Denmark. And also, uh, as I say, surrounded from houses who may maybe have five to six floors. And uh, mm, that I was a challenge, you see, to see how this thing can mash, you see, in the human scale and in the uh, scale of the houses. So first of all, to mash in the human scale, I took, as I say in the beginning, the human body as an example. You know, as Michelangelo say, l'architettura dipende delle membra dell'uomo. Architecture depends on the human limbs. And uh, so the, the, the fact of getting out of the idea of this sculpture who embodies in itself uh, the idea of the man, you see, and then also treating, uh, the, treating, you see, the facade 
not let's say all glazed or all because I didn't have had a, a, a skyline in my background just the blue sky, but I knew down below houses with windows, as you can see here, uh, will, be, will be built. So it was for me a little bit the idea of that uh, the perforations in the facade should be controlled, isn't it? Should be controlled uh, in order to reach in each one of the cubes the scale you can see down below. Here you see also from Another marble, and this is also something that I want to underline, I saw also grow all this city in something like five years. It was extraordinary to, to, to start it in a no man's land and then see in five years, you know, appear a city with canals, with, with uh, ponds, with, uh, with uh, beautiful promenades, with harbors, as you are seeing here. With the building always, you know, linked, uh, I mean, in my opinion, in a natural way, as the mast of a boat is also linked with the boat itself, isn't it? And it is part of it. Here you see it uh, close to the building. And then it is important also to see that we have been building uh, for a budget, isn't it? And you see it also, the repetition of the element. They are all repetitive, even the elements in the corners. So um, let's say a lot of serial work you know, was done. Uh, even the frames of the glass were flat. And this brings us into the, sp the spine. The spine was also uh, engineering-wise, as I say, I am also an engineer, was an important tool not only for the pure static, but also for the problem of damping. The turning torso is extremely slender, extremely slender. The core is uh, around one sixteenth of the high of the building. And the problem is not the deflection, which it can be easily controlled. The problem is the acceleration. That for apartment buildings is the lowest one you can have. So you can have an acceleration for offices, for hotels, one, uh, uh, 20 milligs, 15 milligs, and then 10 milligs for apartment. So the fact that the stiffness of the frame out, outside was different and complementary of the stiffness of the core brought us to a, um, a damping effect between both, and we could so control the acceleration in the top of the building. You see it here. Here you see also the building again, um, the repetitivity uh, of the different elements, how the slab, always the same, is turning around the central core, and uh, <coughs> the, <coughs> the conjunction of the spine and core, that it is also visible here in the plan, with a central core in concrete done by a very simple technique of sliding, and then the slabs, who was basically the same slab, always, you see, just turning in a range of something like five degrees from floor to floor. The floor was also this, what uh, you call, or people call, plan libre, free plan. You see, no columns inside. So it was easy to then to do partitions, um, and to do partitions in one room apartment to more. Even has been people who took a whole floor. Here's some images you see approaching to the, the frontal view in the night. The, uh, the client who, as I say, you know, through his 90 years experience, uh, uh, has a lot of uh, uh, feeling uh, for how to organize a building like that functionally and from the point of view of the people, they wanted to have a lobby rather in the same scale as the apartment. Although the entrance is double floor, but the lobby itself is one floor. So you enter, then you have a corridor, straight you go into the first cube, who is uh, um, uh, devoted to, to offices, and then on both sides you arrive into the uh, lobby itself. Here you see it uh, from the side. Uh, we have done a pool for reflection, and also the two sculptures you are seeing, one and here they are, they are my, uh, they commissioned me also a series of small pieces those here are rather big. They have a diameter of maybe 12 feet. But inside, you see, we have done a series of small interventions um, as they are the handles that you saw before, um, based again in the, the, the essence of the building itself, which it is the human body. And here also the corridor, you will see small pictures embedded in the wood they are uh, drawings I have done, uh, uh, representing faces of people more and more abstract. Then this is the entry floor, who has, as I say before, 
try to catch the scale of the apartments up above. Here, if you arrive from the neighbor building, which it is a parking, you can arrive also in the underground and enter into the building. HSB has a lot of experience in how to manage collectivities uh, together, you see, in terms of offering common services. So they are from meetings rooms uh, to, to, to work, uh, working rooms where people can rent, you know, to do, uh, um, to, to, to do bricolage, or even there is a cellar uh, for each one of the people. This is the interior of an apartment with the windows. Here you see it also, uh, another apartment, you know, from another point of view. I think it's another one. This is kitchen, bath, and... And here some views of... Uh, the terraces in between are used for... Um, uh, um, are of common use, even the terrace in the top of the building. They are uh, an observatory also. And this is uh, an image of the turning torso reflected in the pond and with the neighbor houses. So thank you, all of you, for your attention. Thank you very much.